everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This is my first time being called to the chief's office, so I felt like I might have been in trouble, um, but I'm delighted to be here. Um, uh, and I'll say this, thank you so much for taking the time today. We are excited today to announce uh, a comprehensive strategy to fight auto theft across the city of Denver and what we think will put us on path to be uh, one of the most aggressive enforcement cities to make sure we can reduce uh, auto theft across the city uh, in a comprehensive way. I want to talk a little about uh, the variables that led to us getting to this place and the strategy we are going to use to get out of this place um, and the evidence we have that shows that these strategies will work. Um, we know this was a function of a number of overlapping variables over the last several years that led to dramatic increases in auto theft. Uh, one was it became much easier to steal uh, a whole brand of vehicles, particularly new vehicles that came out uh, with defects that made it much easier for uh, thieves to get in and to steal them and abscond with them. Second was obviously we saw a great uh, increase in crime citywide of which auto theft was often the leading uh, indicator but sometimes the least urgent uh, when we had increase in violent crime. And so this was able to expand uh, significantly. And the third was it happened in conjunction with a dramatic drop in our patrol capacity. Uh, as people may know, from uh, about 2020 to 2021, we lost about 13% of our patrol capacity, which is the equivalent of losing almost an entire uh, patrol district uh, in our you know, of a police district. Uh, and so that lays out, we think, what the path is to how to solve the problem that we're facing. So I want to talk you through the overview of the five key steps of this coordinated plan we're announcing today. I'll give it over to the chief and his team to talk in greater detail. Um, uh, the first is, you may remember when I was uh, campaigning uh, for mayor, we publicly pushed for the idea that we needed to have a dedicated unit uh, in the Denver Police Department focused on auto theft. Uh, Chief Thomas took it upon himself uh, to get that started and launched our, successfully. We have now the Denver Auto Theft Team. That was launched as a pilot last year. It has been very successful. We're excited to commit to now making that pilot effort permanent so that the Auto Theft Team will be a permanent function of the police department uh, going forward. Uh, the second one is we have also uh, demonstrated uh, the powerful success of the use of license plate readers. These are cameras that allow you to read the license plate of a vehicle when it is uh, leaving a location. Once we have a car that's been reported as stolen, we know what that license plate is. We can then scan across those cameras uh, for identifying those license plates. Under the chief's leadership, we deployed that strategy, as you know, at, at the Denver airport. Uh, over the last six months, we put license plate readers at Den Airport. Uh, over the last six months, we have dropped the auto theft rate at DIA by 90%. 90% decrease in auto theft at Den using these license plate readers. That is why our plan now is to expand that capacity across the city. We will take the city from two license plate readers currently in operation around the city and county of Denver to 111. Uh, we will put 111 license plate readers across the city at more than 70 intersections, which means if you steal a car anywhere in the city, we will have a chance to track you as soon as you have left that location, know the direction in which you fled, and be able to help inform police pursuit uh, of those individuals at that time. The third is, as was mentioned, and uh, our team can go in greater depth on this, there are certain vehicles and brands that are very, very susceptible to theft and make up the great majority of thefts happening in the city right now. Many of those right now are Kias and Hyundais, uh, and those are because they have a function where you can break in. I'm not releasing any news to help th thieves. This is all over YouTube at this moment. Uh, you can pop the cap off of the start button. You can use an iPhone charger or anything else to connect that electric circuit and start a vehicle with no key fob or anything else. Um, so that is why we're working with Kia and Hyundai to host events this spring where we will invite all Denver residents who have these vehicles to bring them in uh, for us to do a software update that will protect the these vehicles uh, from further theft. That's a huge uh, change for folks that are at great risk with those vehicles right now. We are also in the interim, Chief has led the capacity that if you currently have one of those vehicles and are worried about this, uh, you can get a manual protection like a club or others from one of our local police districts uh, to help keep you safe uh, in the meantime. Uh, number four is um, we are also expanding uh, a program that the Chief helped start called Denver Track which is a program by which you can um, register your vehicle with the city so we can uh, immediately locate if it has been stolen. 
Uh, some of us, not naming any names, might happen to have some experience with this situation. Um, but I will tell you what happened when I got my car stolen uh, is I had not done this. We had not registered this with the Denver Track Program. So what I have to do then on a Sunday afternoon is try and call your manufacturer, try and call the uh, uh, the um, uh, original place where you bought the vehicle, try to get a hold of someone who will transfer you. And it took hours before we could get that uh, we could get that accomplished. If you pre-register your vehicle through the Denver track program with the DPD, the minute your car is stolen, our police department and our auto theft team is pre-authorized to call the manufacturer on your, on your behalf on a dedicated police line where they can immediately activate the tracking for that car and find it. And so this is a critically important need. We want everyone in the city who has a car made after 2014, you should do this because it is the best way to make sure if your car is stolen, we get it recovered. Um, Second thing is, if you're also uh, someone uh, like me who may happen to own a vehicle that is made before 2014 and does not have GPS tracking, we are also partnering with you to put in place a tile system that you can use, uh, that you can store in your vehicle, that we can track. You can also register that uh, with us, so in the event that your car gets stolen, we can also immediately activate the capacity to help you search for that vehicle. Quick recovery is the most important part uh, of the strategy here. Uh, finally, then I'll give it over to the chief. The fifth part of this strategy is, as I mentioned, a huge part of the difficulty here was lost patrol capacity. When we reduce our police force across the city, many things happen. One of them is our inability to respond quickly uh, to auto theft. This is why we are so focused this year on restoring our uh, police force to full authorized capacity. That's why uh, the chief and I are working together to fill three cadet classes this year that would put 167 uh, cadets and then officers back on the street. That would bring us back to greater patrol capacity than we had even in 2018, which would mean we have the people on the streets who have the capacity to respond. So we think together these five steps focus on keeping now a permanent Denver auto theft team, the focus on expanding 111 license plate readers across the city to help deter and chase uh, vehicles that have been stolen. The ability to work with people that have high risk vehicles that are being stolen to upgrade those with software improvements to make them more protected. Uh, the ability to expand our Denver track program so you have your car registered with us and the minute it's stolen we can start chasing it. And the ability to restore our patrol to full force, we think helps put us on a path to make dramatic impact on this problem. So uh, thank you all so much for being here. I will turn it over to the chief, and then uh, we're both happy to take questions after the chief's done. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so you know, as the mayor stated, we're building on our successes and lessons learned from our auto theft prevention and enforcement efforts, which saw, again, a 20% increase in 2023 and the decrease that we saw um, at DIA um, as well, um, which I think was also um, not just the license plate readers, but I think the fantastic work of the Metro Auto Theft Team as well as the Denver Auto Theft Team. Um, also using um, available tools and resources, um, you know, we saw the, you know, nearly 2,200 auto theft suspects arrested. Um, also, uh, 20, 2,800 people signed their vehicle up for Denver track. Um, and none of those people have had their car stolen so far. So, you know, thankfully, uh, because they're registered, uh, we would be able to re recover that car quickly if it's stolen. Um, but we're hopeful that the fact that we actually give everybody that registers um, a sticker to place in a very conspicuous location on their vehicle is actually a deterrent to, to it being stolen. So, uh, again, you know, uh, as the mayor stated, our DAT team is moving from pilot to permanent. Uh, and so uh, based upon the successes that you can see here, uh, 200 uh, auto theft arrests made specifically by this team, that's about 20% of all the auto theft arrests made uh, by the city, an additional 45 arrests for other felony crimes, and then 30 illegal guns recovered by this team as well, which supports our theory that a lot of these cars that are stolen are actually stolen uh, and then used in some other type of violent crime. Uh, the team is made up of five uh, highly specialized investigators, uh, as well as two uh, uniform patrol officers, and then supervised by a sergeant. So, uh, you know, I think one of the primary things that we're all here to talk about uh, in today's conversation is we are preparing to install uh, a network of license plate reader cameras throughout the city. As was mentioned, we're going to have 111 cameras installed throughout the city. It'll cover all six of our police districts. Um, 93 of those cameras are actually going to be purchased through general fund, and we'll be adding that to 18 that were previously acquired by Councilman uh, Cashman and Councilman Sawyer. 
um, these uh, license plate readers will be helpful in helping us locate uh, vehicles that have been reported st stolen, as well as vehicles that have been reported as being involved in a violent crime, such as a homicide, as well as, uh, as, well as um, hit and runs. So certainly we want to have some policy uh, safeguards. So as you can see, the system will not collect uh, personal identifiable information. Uh, the camera is vectored right at the, the back of your car, so all it's going to capture is that license plate. Um, the data is only going to be stored for 30 days unless um, it is um, identified as evidence uh, in a crime and then it will be tagged and that uh, particular footage or image will be uh, retained for beyond that period of time. But uh, if it's not tagged, it will, be, uh, it will not be retained beyond 30 days. Um, it will not be used for uh, traffic enforcement or uh, justifications for searching vehicles. Uh, all alerts will be verified uh, with dispatch. So if an officer gets an alert uh, on a specific uh, license plate, they're going to check uh, that information, cross-reference that information with a dispatcher before making any enforcement action. Uh, all searches of the database will be tracked and then we'll be performing random audits of our searches. I think it's also important to acknowledge that the footage uh, is going to be owned by the Denver Police Department, the city and county of Denver, not going to be sold or, or shared um, by the vendor. Uh, it's also not connected to registration data or any third party uh, database such as uh, Carfax or the DMV. Uh, and then, you know, in the vein of uh, transparency, we are going to be uh, setting up a, a transparency portal uh, where you can see uh, information I think is going to be important to folks. This is going to be located in the same place where all of our other transparency data is located on our DPD website. You'll be able to see exactly where all of our uh, cameras are located. You'll be able to see um, all, of the, all of the license plates that were tracked, those that were identified as being wanted. Also, our, um, our policy will be available uh, for review here. Uh, this is just an image of uh, Castle Rock's um, uh, policy that they have up uploaded. Um, and Castle Rock, by the way, has uh, deployed uh, license plate reader cameras and saw a 40% reduction uh, in their auto theft since the deployment of their cameras. Uh, so before we get to questions, I just want to say that, uh, you know, we're certainly encouraged by the decreases that we've seen so far. Uh, and encouraged by the promise of, uh, of this new uh, and enhanced strategy. And we're certainly thankful uh, to the mayor for prioritizing this issue, which is certainly a concern for the entire community. So, questions? Yes. Uh, so, when this was like these first cameras were put out a couple of years ago, there were some stories about people getting pinged for things like traffic violations. There were also concerns about like ICE accessing some mm -hmm. of these cameras. Mm -hmm. And I know you said it's only going to be used for this stuff, mm -hmm. but like, what would you have to say? Mm -hmm. start using these cameras for something else. Certainly. Fair question. So I, I think the cameras that, uh, that you're talking about, I think one of them is at 6th and Federal. And those cameras were actually installed for different purposes. And so um, the, the tolerances, uh, for lack of a better term, that were, uh, that were set on that were for uh, various um, uh, you know, traffic violations and things like that. And so the, the tolerances on these cameras are not going to be set for that. It's only going to be set for auto theft, and violent crimes and hit and runs, uh, it's going to stay that way. Our policy is going to ensure that it stays that way. We're going to have um, um, uh, insurance measures in place to make sure that no one is searching the database um, and using it for any other any other justification. And 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 by by city policy and mandate, we're not going to be sharing any information with ICE. A lot of people are using AirPods. Yes. We do, and I think, you know, as the mayor alluded to, so obviously any uh, vehicle that was manufactured after 2014 probably has some sort of um, uh, manufactured tracking device, but those that were, uh, that were built before that uh, date, I think those tiles are very effective. And so we certainly encourage people that have vehicles that were made uh, before 2014 uh, to get one of those devices, place it in a in an inconspicuous location within your car, um, and then give us that permission to to track that vehicle. It's certainly very helpful. Yes, sir. 
Do you have to establish a probable cause, obtain a warrant, or what's the process look like for you guys actually accessing that data and using it in a case? So uh, the, the, the fact that, that the license plate um, is associated with an auto theft, so you know, someone reports their car, they say, this is my, this is my license plate, or um, witness to a homicide or a non-fatal shooting says, this is the vehicle, this is the license plate of the vehicle. I mean, that, that is reasonable suspicion, probable cause right there. Um, and obviously, you know, when that plate is, is um, alerted to an officer, they're going to contact the dispatcher to verify uh, what they're in fact seeing, so. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, are, are these cameras in a vulnerable place? I mean, do you have problems with vandalism, or are you concerned about that? And how much does that cost? Well, expensive technology, certainly, so I guess that is a concern. Um, uh, we're not going to be shy about where these, uh, uh, these are located. Uh, I know that the contract includes uh, some, some maintenance, and so um, I think that other people's experience are, are that they aren't easily, uh, you know, damaged. Yes, ma'am. So with being transparent mm -hmm. about where they are, is the goal really to have just so many everywhere that you can catch people in the act? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, we certainly don't want to have any disparate impact on any particular community. Uh, certainly, these were uh, the locations were identified through an overlay of uh, violent crime, auto theft, as well as hit and runs. Uh, so that's how we identified the locations that they were best deployed at. Um, and yeah, we want people to know that they exist. We want people to know that uh, if you steal a car, you're going to be quickly uh, tracked and identified and captured. Um, and I think we want the public to have assurance that, uh, that uh, if your vehicle is stolen, that we have that opportunity to recover quickly. So are they on, are they on traffic poles? Are they on lights? Right. Yes. I mean, they have to be, you know, kind of in a, in a location where they can, you know, uh, see down towards that, where that license plate is, uh, is visible. And so, you know, I think any, you know, traffic poles and, and other utility poles and things like that are optimal locations. Yes, Jason. Have you seen another major We, we have, um, you know, we've done quite a bit of research, uh, and so there are other cities that have used this, and again, you know, even locally, um, uh, Lone Tree has used it very effectively. Um, almost immediate uh, success, I think, seen at DIA, so that, I think, is proof of concept for why this is an effective strategy. Okay. Yes, ma'am. When will the uh, implements hit DIA, and when are we mm -hmm. going to be implementing this? Mm -hmm. So uh, a few months ago is when they were implemented at DIA, so obviously they had a pretty significant issue. Um, there were a number of crews that were targeting DIA, and I think the installation of the cameras and then the focus of both our local team and the Metro-wide team was effective in, in addressing that issue. Um, we are currently in the procurement stage, so I expect that we will get through that fairly quickly. And then installation uh, is about four to eight weeks, so I think uh, in, in the very near future we will have these installed. Yes, ma'am. I know you mentioned that there's a, a heat map that you use to determine where these uh, cameras will be placed, mm -hmm. or the license plate meter readers will be placed. Are there like certain neighborhoods that like people can expect to see kind of a, a lot of them, or what, what's that going to look like? Well, as I said, there they are deployed across. Um, all six police districts. And so certainly um, there are locations, you know, maybe in central Denver or along East Colfax, um, uh, maybe parts of West Denver where there's been a higher concentration of both stolen cars and violent crime. And so again, that those were the metrics that we used to identify where the best locations would be, yes. And you say you can go about Bergen in like downtown Denver? Correct, okay. yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it possible to, to get a list of where these are going up? And then another question, mm -hmm. like, tiles or increased like car tracking things like that that also like raises alarm bells for mm -hmm. me for like potential victims of domestic abuse mm -hmm. so like is there concern about how increased car tracking could lead to mm -hmm. more abuse that maybe isn't getting reported or things like that yeah no i appreciate that question so two things one yes we will be publishing the locations of these and those are those, those can be available to you and yes i do understand the concern about the ability to track your own car uh, certainly when uh, someone calls to report their car stolen and even calls to report that they are able to track that, they are um, 
Uh, I think sternly advised by the dispatcher not to follow their car and not to track that car. I do know that there is thought of legislation, I think, you know, banning that practice for someone to, uh, uh, to track the, the location of their car. I think that we've seen recently uh, a pretty tragic incident where someone who tracked their own car and then was in, involved in a gun battle with the individual that stole their car and that person lost their life. Yes, sir. Uh, so folks in the community are actually worried that the pen penalties for those who are committed to stealing the cars are very are not harsh enough. Mm -hmm. um, was the conversation on making those harsher a part of this process of putting this plan together, or will it be in the future? Yeah, so I appreciate that, that question. So. Um, uh, a couple of things, you know, I think that that uh, one other thing that wasn't mentioned were some legislative concerns as it related to auto theft that I think led to an increase in auto theft. I think some of those things have been corrected uh, through the legislature. Um, and so, um, it, it, and I also understand that, you know, in you know, very close relationship with, uh, with DA Beth McCann, she understands as well the urgency in addressing this issue and holding folks accountable. And so I think that uh, she would stand here today and say that she is aggressively prosecuting folks that steal cars. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll jump in after you, Chief Minister. Go ahead. Okay. Um, excuse me. In, at DIA or in other cities that have done this, is the effect of this that prevention from the deterrence or is it from being able to track I would say both. I would say that um, it certainly has a deterrent effect, and I think the other thing is it um, it uh, makes it much easier for us to locate that car, get it back to the owner um, uh, very quickly. Um, and I think that the the average impact to a victim of having their car stolen is about ten thousand dollars per victim. Uh, an annual cost for investigating uh, auto theft is nearly six hundred thousand dollars, and so I think that if we can reduce the the numbers of cars that are stolen and um, high, you know increase the the recovery rate of those vehicles, I think that we will um, have a significant cost impact. So. Mayor, uh, does this uh, does, does your personal experience uh, make this a higher priority? Uh, it does not make it a higher priority. It just makes me more informed as to how the process works and how it should work. Um, and I think this is why we wanted to focus both on prevention uh, and on recovery. And so what you'll see here are a series of strategies around prevention. If we can help folks that have cars that are at risk update their vehicles to be less prone to theft, that helps prevent. We can have you sign up for the Denver Track Program and have that sticker on your window so every potential auto thief knows when they come up to your car that your car is already tracked and that's a bad idea. And if we can be aggressive about everyone in the city knowing, uh, there will be the capacity for us to identify auto thieves in every neighborhood of the city. Uh, when the team first came to me and said, we think this system really works, we could roll it out step by step, uh, our response was to say, no, let's flood the whole city with these license plate readers because we want to make sure every neighborhood is secure, we want to make sure no neighborhood is exposed, and we want to make sure that there's not one sneaky route to get out of Denver that every thief knows they can use without being detected. We want to make sure we can find them wherever they go. And so our goal is this should be a clear message that if you steal a car in this city, uh, you will be caught and you will be prosecuted. Uh, and that means you ought to decide to either not do it or to do it someplace else. Uh, because uh, we think there's way too many people being put at risk. And to just name what the chief said, for families that have one car, uh, and are trying to get to and from work, uh, and they're trying to be able to pay the rent, not being able to get into your car, not being able to get to and from work, that can have a massive impact on families' economic well-being. Uh, and we want to make sure that they are protected as they're doing everything they can to serve and support the city. So we think this puts us on track to be one of the most aggressive cities in the country on fighting this effort. Uh, and we think through the strategies this team have proven can work, we can roll out a system citywide that will be equitable, will be fair, and will be aggressive in making sure that uh, no one has an easy task to try to steal a car in Denver. Uh, so thank you all so much. In Espanol, tienes si. pregunta. Sí. Para los medios en español, ¿nos puede explicar un poco sobre esta nueva plataforma y qué buscamos con ella, por favor? Sí, va a ser un poco más difícil en español porque hay unas palabras que son difíciles para traducir aquí. Um, uh, gracias. Hoy es un importante día porque uh, te anunciamos un programa para preventar uh, el auto theft aquí en Denver y hay cosas que vamos a hacer. La, la, lo más importante es que vamos a poner cámaras, uh, uh, 111 de cámaras en la ciudad que se llaman license plate readers que pueden encontrar tu coche si alguien te roba de tu coche. También hay cosas que puedes poner en tu coche uh, como 
trackers que podemos usar si alguien te roba tu coche, podemos ayudarle en uh, recubrirlo. Y, y también si tienes un vehículo más, más nuevo, después de uh, 2014, puedes registrarlo con nosotros y si te roban, uh, podemos encontrarlo también. Entonces, uh, esas cosas van a ayudar aquí en Denver a uh, hacerlo en ciudad que es mucho más seguro que antes, por eso. Uh, uh, este, uh, todos esos dólares todavía están pagados por la budget que tenemos aquí en Denver con el Departamento de Policía. Gracias a todos. Thank you all so much for being here.